Hello my friends, my name is Ben, and this is the second video in an MGN series called Destiny Enemies Explained, where we take away just the basic bare bones information that you know about the different enemy races in the world of Destiny, and we look at the lore, the history, and the specific unique identities that these races have, and the factions in these races. To begin with, we started with the Fallen in the first video, and chapter on the MGN uh, Destiny 2 website, we looked at the House of Devils. In this video, we're going to be talking about the House of Exile. Now, just before we begin, when I talked about the House of Devils, I covered a lot of information, a lot of general information about the Fallen that can be applied to a lot of the other houses. And the House of Exile, um, a lot of these traits applied to the House of Exile. So, for example, the distribution of ether, how that was done to create the class system, uh, the whirlwind, where the fallen came from, and just in general, the equipment used by the fallen, so what the different classes used for weapons and gear and stuff like that, all of that applies to the House of Exile, or at least it did apply because the House of Exile doesn't exist anymore. So with that being said, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. If you are interested in that, um, I will have a link to that video in the description below, so go check that out if you are interested. With that being said, let's just get straight into the House of Exile being their origin and their identity. Well, the most basic thing that you can say about the House of Exile was that they wore green. If you were fighting Fallen and they were wearing green, you knew they were from the House of Exile. But apart from that, the House of Exile actually had several very unique traits that set them apart from the other houses. Though the, the House of Exile, they were generally disliked and um, usually avoided by the other houses. And this was for two very specific and very valid reasons. So the first reason was the house's actual location. Well, if you play Destiny 1 and you understand that green equals the House of Exile, you've probably figured out that the House of Exile was situated on the moon. And the moon, is probably still to this day, is one of the most hostile locations in our system. And the core reason for that is the hive. When I'm done going through all the different fallen factions and houses, I might do the Hive next, um, but what, what I will say about them for now is that the Hive entered our system during the Collapse, and this was under the Hive God Crota. There is a chance that Oryx was there as well, but since there's no specific mentioning of him, I'm not going to make any guesses about that. What I do know is that Crota was a god that led the Hive into our system during the Collapse. I actually played through the Dark Below story yesterday. If you don't know, the Dark Below is the first Destiny 1 DLC, which is all about preventing the Hive god Crota from reawakening and leading a Hive invasion of Earth. So I played through that story yesterday. And the character Eris Morn, I think regardless of if you're a Destiny 1 or Destiny 2 player, you should know who Eris is. Eris Morn, she actually states in that story that the first boss that you fight in the story, Sardon, the Fist of Crota, he is Crota's general and he actually claimed Moon 4 as god. So it's a fairly reasonable guess that during the collapse, Sardon along with Crota and then the rest of their faction of the Hive, they came to the moon, they slaughtered any of the humans there, and then they cracked open the moon and they created a massive network of tunnels deep beneath the moon's surface that stretched for miles and miles and miles. Ever since then, since the collapse, the Hive have been there, and they will destroy anything that goes near them. And that's pretty, that, that's the lucky outcome for whatever that thing is, because they tend to torture and feed off of pain as well. So, I mean, yeah, that's that. So, with that being said, it's really easy to understand why nobody would want to live on the moon. And apart from just being really really evil the hive on the moon it's a presence that has been very difficult to remove up until recently and even still they're they're, they're still there one of the largest army of guardians um this was actually led by the warlock order called the praxic the praxic fire they were unable to destroy the hive on the moon and crota came out and he just wiped them out so if a massive army of guardians can't move the hive on the moon, it's safe to say the fallen couldn't. So it's fairly obvious why no one would want to go near the moon. And so then you might be asking, well then why is the house of exile on the moon? It's such a dangerous place and they're clearly not going to get anywhere with them moving the hive. Why are they there? And this brings us to the second reason, which is 
as the name implies, the House of Exile, they were full of exiled fallen. Almost every single fallen on the moon was there for having messed up for one reason or another. They were the dropouts, the rejects, the failures, the criminals, the whatever you want to call it of fallen society. And in order to ultimately survive, they had to unite together on this desolate rock for strength in numbers. And they chose to live in specifically this really dangerous location to act as a deterrent against anyone else, be they fallen or anyone else from disturbing them or trying to attack them. It was a risk they were willing and they were kind of forced to take. Another unique trait uh, that the House of Exile had as a result of their, I guess, personality and identity and their history is that a much larger percentage of its population were drakes, especially when compared to the other houses. This is again for two reasons. So the first reason is that the House of Exile really struggled for resources. The House of Exile had no Kel. They specifically, it specifically stated that they had no Archon, and it is unknown if they had a Prime Servitor or not. Um, if you haven't watched my previous video, or you read the previous article, or you just don't know about the Fallen in general, what's a big deal about having a Prime Servitor? Well, the Prime Servitor is what creates, for the most part, the ether that the Fallen need to survive. The more ether a Fallen has, the bigger they get, so... When you see a drake, it means they don't have a lot of ether. So if a house doesn't have a prime servitor, there's going to be a lot of dregs. Um, even if they did have a prime servitor, they wouldn't be able to scout beyond the moon because territory on, say, Earth or other planets, this was either controlled by guardians or the Vex or the Cabal or just other fallen houses in general. And like I said, they really did not like the House of Exile. So if... Um, you were in the Cosmodrome and you were a House of Exile Drag, and a House of Devils Vandal spotted you, he would probably just pick you off. So that is the main reason why the House of Exile has so many Drakes. There just wasn't enough Aether to get enough Fallen into, I guess, the Vandal stage in their growth. Uh, the second possible reason, and I think it is still a valid reason, is that the members of this house, they were the failures. Um, or the fallen that were kicked out of their houses. So they probably would have been dregs to begin with, or they would have been reduced to dregs by the time they reached the moon. So I guess it's fair to say that the amount of dregs in the House of Exile was also a clear statement about the track record of the fallen in that house. So the House of Exile, they weren't at the Battle of Six Fronts or Twilight Gap because, well, I'm pretty sure they were created after Twilight Gap, but even if they were around before those battles, I think they just would have been ignored and shunned. And for the most part, they did not interact with any other houses. That being said, the House of Kings, they were a possible exception. Frigorous, uh, an exile baron, he is killed by quote-unquote the Guardian or the player character while leading an expedition deep inside Hive territory. So he wore exile colors, meaning that this baron was green. Um, but when he's slain, it's actually stated that his death would weaken the House of Kings grip on the moon. And this implies that either he was working with the House of Kings, or he was sent by the House of Kings as either undercover or a messenger. And this would not be the first instance of the House of Kings secretly pulling the strings of other houses. I mentioned in my previous chapter and video that it is heavily rumored, it was anyway in Destiny 1 heavily rumored, that the House of Devils at some stage became a proxy for the House of Kings, so that the House of Kings was secretly controlling the House of Devils in the background. So this incident with Frigorous um, wearing exile colors, but when he's dead, there's a connection with the House of Kings revealed. This really gives the theory a lot of credence. Just a fun fact. Now, what purpose the House of Kings they would have for a house as weak and as desolate as the House of Exile, nobody knows. Right, the next part is the notable House of Exile members and associates, and this is really the only interesting, I guess you could say, claim to fame that the House of Exile had. Although they never accomplished any great feats, they weren't in any great battles, they never did anything amazing, what they should be known for, and they, what, they, what they were known for, um, was their roster of really notable members, and I'd say chief among them were the Scorn Barons. All of the Scorn Barons, for the most part, from Destiny 2 Forsaken, if you've played that and if you know about that, they were originally from the Exile, the Exile House. And it was the harsh conditions of living on the moon and having to deal with the lack of resources and being shunned by the other fallen and being hunted down by guardians, it eventually created them as the dark monsters that they were in the end. I think a perfect example of this is actually Hirax. Hirax was a Dreg 
from the House of Exile, and either by accident, or out of desperation from starvation, or uh, I don't know, suicide, he threw himself or he fell into the Hellmouth on the moon. Now, if you don't know what the Hellmouth is, you know the big massive gaping pit on the moon, you can imagine that if you threw yourself in there, it's probably a death sentence for you, but when Hirex came out, and he did come out, it was with a load of hive at his back and the ability to create a hive throne world in the ascendant plane. If you don't know what all those terms mean, don't worry about it, I'll thoroughly cover them when it gets to writing about the hive. Um, another noteworthy associate of the House of Exile was actually the fallen mercenary Tanix, the Scarred. Now I mentioned him in my previous chapter and video that Tanix um, was not from any house that we've seen. There's a theory that he was from a house called House Scar and that he ended up destroying it, but if there's anything that you should know about Tanix, apart from the fact that he seems to always defy death, bringing in the Deepstone Crypt as an example, it's the fact that he utterly despises the fallen hierarchy system. I mentioned him potentially destroying a house, and whatever house he was in, he actually had his lower arms cut off by the kel of that house. And in just direct defiance, he replaced them with robotic arms, and then he killed his kel with them. And this really showed that Tanix was an enemy of the system, I guess you could say. And at the same time though, an enemy of the system, the hierarchy, whatever you want to call it, this made him a perfect ally and a perfect fit for the House of Exile. Now he wasn't a member of the House of Exile, but he was hired during the House of Wolves Rebellion to do some work for Skolos, and so he secured his catch on the moon in the House of Exile territory, they were very welcoming to him. At the same time, uh, just another fun fact, Tanix is not the only outsider to willingly go to the House of Exile, um, you know, instead of being kicked out or banished. Skorix, uh, he was a member of the House of Wolves, but he refused to serve Skolas when he returned from captivity. And I'm going to cover the House of Wolves next, so we'll get in all into Skolas and all that kind of fun stuff. But Anyway, he refused to serve Skolas when Skolas proclaimed himself to be the Kel of Kells. And after killing a wolf Archon, Skorix escaped the House of Wolves and he traveled to the moon and there he planned on joining the House of Exile, but we managed to kill him before he did that. So what exactly happened to the House of Exile? What's their fate? Well, when you compare the House of Exile to the rest of the Fallen Houses, um, even if you want to compare them to the House of Devils, which I've already you know, mentioned and discussed, you could say they got off relatively easy. One could argue they actually had the happiest ending as well. They were never wiped out by the Hive. I think it's because they were too busy dealing with us. And that was because we ended up killing the Hive God Crota and his highest ranking warriors during the Dark Below expansion. And with the leadership of the Hive on the moon slain, it would be several, several, several years until Shadowkeep when Crota's one daughter, um, Hash Ladoon, would finally try and reorganize the Hive, and by that stage, we were already there to finish her off. So, the House of Exile was safe from the Hive, and they could just live and just chill on the moon. At the same time, because we were so busy focusing on the Hive, the chance that, you know, if you were Greg the Dreg, living in a cubbyhole, the chances of a Fist of Havoc knocking on your door, it just, it just wasn't really likely to happen. So, for the most part, the House of Exile was safe on the moon. Again, though, if the House of Exile no longer exists, but they weren't wiped out, what happened to them? Well, during the period of time, which was Destiny 1, from the start to the finish of those three years, pretty much all the fallen houses were destroyed or disbanded at one stage or another, and the survivors of those houses, for the most part, they joined a new house that they formed, and this house was called the House of Dusk, and again, I'll be making a separate video and a chapter on them, but um, for the most part, it is believed that this house, again, is against the kind of hierarchy system. And this is kind of shown by the fact that although they have drags and vandals, the drags don't have docking caps on. You can see their arms beginning to grow. Now, you know, you'll never see a drag with four arms. I think that's just, you know, Bungie made the drags for House of Dusk and they decided to make them, make them that way and that's the way it was. But the fact that they chose to do it like that, I think it does show that they are against the whole docking system. So I think when the House of Exile saw this, they were for joining the House of Dusk and I guess being reintegrated into Fallen Society or this new Fallen Society. As a result of this, the moon became an open a field of territory for the House of Dusk and that is why if you currently go to the moon in Destiny 2, you will find Fallen, but they will be from the House of Dusk and there's a good chance, I wouldn't be surprised if those same Fallen 
just stayed there and were actually originally from the House of Exile. Any Fallen who didn't join the House of Dusk and they were in the House of Exile, uh, they would later either join the House of Salvation on Europa or the House of Light or even just straight up just join the spider on the Tangled Shore and just not be a part of the house at all. So in conclusion, that is the House of Exile for you, uh, short but sweet. They were the lowest of all the Fallen Houses, but they did have the happiest ending. If you want to know more about the House of Exile, or just, you know, the world of destiny in general, you can find as much as you want on ishtarcollective.net. I'll have a link in the description and also destinypedia.com. Personally, I would prefer Ishtar Collective. Um, I would use Destinypedia if you just want to look up the house and then look at the list of all the different names of the barons and the archons and stuff like that. But if you're looking for more user-friendly knowledge, go to ishtarcollective.net. That being said, if you're willing to wait, um, you can learn more from my memory, which most of this information was pulled. I am a walking encyclopedia and um, I aim to please. So uh, you keep waiting, I'll keep delivering. Right, with that being said, just go kill some fallen, and if you're on the moon or anywhere else, wonder if any of them were once from the House of Exile. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video and chapter. Take care.